Okay, so now we're back in 3ds Max. I'm going to name the trunk trunk template. This is because any work we do to the trunk from now on will be done on a duplicate. You never ever want to affect the original object. It's just good practice. I'm going to switch to my top viewport here and I'm going to draw out a new plane. I'm going to have a length and width of 10 meters and I'm going to make sure that it only has one segment as well. So this is going to serve as a template for our leaf textures. So now with the updated diffuse and normal map, I'm going to draw out fresh planes over the top of our leaf texture template. So this way of texturing and modeling is very effective because you're actually letting the texture dictate the size of the model. So once again, as you can see, I'm making sure that these planes have no width and length segments. And remember that these are the template files that you're creating here. Okay, I'm now gonna unhide the tree trunk. I'm gonna hide the large plane template underneath. And now with everything selected, I'm going to apply an unwrap UVW modifier. So now what we need to do with these three planes is to make sure that they are unwrapped and they match over exactly where those leaves are on the texture. So I'm going to go to pick texture, bitmap, and I'm just going to select the diffuse. Now we can go ahead and relax each one of these plane cards and line it up perfectly over our leaf textures. So we're using the exact same tools here as before. You want to use relax, uniform scale, and obviously the move function as well. Get them all nicely in position. And the most obvious way to check that everything is fine is to apply the materials to the objects in the scene. And you get instant feedback on how the end visual is going to look. So we're gonna convert these planes to editable polys. Now, as you can see, we've currently got a black background on them. Well, that's because we haven't applied the opacity map yet. So in our material editor, we're going to go to the opacity slot and we're going to update it with our opacity map. Remember to go to views, show materials and viewport as realistic with maps. And once you've done this, you should now be able to see those leaf textures coming through with a completely transparent background. So we're letting the texture do most of the work here. We're not adding too many polygons. So this is effectively the main palette of all of the trees we need right here. We've got all of the textures we need near enough. From here on out, it's just a case of management and adding polygons. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that trunk template. I'm just gonna call it something different. And now straight away, we can make this trunk a little bit more interesting. We can move some of the edges. So if I double click an edge, it will loop. I can go on soft selection, just like before. I can make just some little alterations here. I can even go ahead and connect another edge in a place that I think looks too sharp. And what you can also take advantage of here is the set flow function. So if you go to the modeling tab, you should see an option called set flow. Now what this will do, it will level out the edges and give them a bit more of a smoother transition. So whenever you're modeling like this, this is a really, really useful function. Okay, so now that we've got the trunk of the tree, as we would like, I'm now going to go to polygon. I'm gonna select the top few polygons of the tree and I'm gonna hold down shift and drag. And what this is gonna do, it's going to copy these polygons as a separate mesh. Now this is gonna serve as one of my branches. So we're using the exact same texture here. So once again, it's as efficient as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and detach this as a separate object. Just go into edit geometry and select detach, call it whatever you want, branch for example. Now, depending on how covered you want your tree to be with leaves, that will determine how many of these polygon branches you have. Obviously, having lots of polygonal branches like this is going to use up uh, more memory, more polygons, more triangles. So it's always something you want to bear in mind. If your tree isn't going to have many leaves on, then yes, you probably will need more of these polygonal branches. If it is going to be covered with leaves, then you don't need so many of these. But that's really the beauty of what we're doing. This method allows you to manipulate each individual tree however you like. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and copy some of these leaf planes. So I'm going to copy the largest one first. And I'm going to set the pivot point to the bottom of the plane. 
where the stem is. And this is really important because whenever we're rotating these planes, we want to rotate them from the anchor point, from where the stem would link up to the bigger branch. So of course you want to go ahead and do that with the polygonal branches as well. And now at the moment, this leaf plane looks good when viewed from the front, but if you go to the side, it's going to be quite flat. So we want to add some edges. So I'm going to go to edge. I'm just going to cut in some edges here. You want to keep it quadded, so I'm just going to follow the natural contour of the leaf. I'm going to go on vertex so I can see where these vertices are. I'm just going to make sure that everything's nicely quadded up here. And remember, you can always hit Control Z if you've made a mistake and just right click to deselect. Okay, I'm going to select those vertices at the side and I'm just going to move them back a bit so that this leaf has a bit of depth. I'm also going to rotate. Now, a function to be aware of is preserve UVs. You might want to turn this on and off when you're making such adjustments. If you turn preserve UVs on, the texture won't stretch, but you will be going across your texture map. If you have preserve UVs turned off, then your texture will stretch. This might be something that you want or don't want. Just play around with it. So I'm now going to go ahead and create another copy of that leaf texture. I like the geometry I've given to this plane, so I'm just going to make another copy. So never be afraid to make lots of copies here, guys. You can always remove them afterwards, but it's, it's good to never work destructively. Always make copies. So I'm just going to go ahead and line this up with that branch I've made. It's an idea as well to set your object orientation to local. This will give you a bit more of an intuitive uh, navigation when you're moving lots of these planes around. You can rotate directly around the pivot point as well. And I'm going to go ahead and optimize this polygonal branch a little more by pressing Control Backspace to remove the edges without crushing the texture. And we're also going to go ahead and repeat this process with the other leaf planes that we made in the scene. OK, so once you've finished getting everything into position and you're happy with the look of one of those branches, what you want to do is to attach all of those separate elements and you do that pretty much the same way that you would do detach. It's under edit geometry. Now what we can do is copy this branch as a whole and just start manipulating it again. So using pretty much the same method as we did before, just move about some of those polygons, uh, move about some of those leaves. You can keep rotating them. You can edit some of the edges. It's always a good idea to kind of optimize it as you go along. It saves you a lot of work later on. Another thing you might like to do is to mirror some of the objects as well. So if you just select the mirror function, you can mirror them on the X or Y axis. This will help to create a bit more variety and differentiation. Once again, remember, you don't want too many of these polygonal twigs and branches if you're going to cover it all over with leaves. It just becomes unnecessary geometry. And of course, once you've finished with this branch, go ahead and create another. You can create as many of these as you want. It's entirely down to you. All that we're doing now is creating extra geometry. We're not using up any more texture space. That's, that's already been dealt with. However, that said, if you do want to go ahead and add another leaf variation into that texture space, you can. I've gone ahead and created one more. And once you've got, I'd say, three decent branch variations, you're ready to start populating them onto that tree trunk. OK, so before we go ahead and start appending some of these branches to the tree, what we want to do is to make sure that the pivot point is set to the stem of each branch. We can do that by going to the hierarchy tab and affecting pivot point like we did earlier. What we also want to do under the utilities panel is to reset the X form on each object. This is just going to make sure that we don't get any scaling issues when we're appending it to the tree trunk. OK, so now what you're going to want to do is to go over to the Object Paint tab. Select Paint Object with one of your branches selected. And then simply click on where you want it to be appended to on the trunk. And it will make a copy of it like so. Then from here, it's just quite simply a case of adjusting the scale of it and adjusting the rotation as you want until you get the desired look. Once you're happy with the position and scale of the branch, 
then you just commit to it by clicking on the tick icon. So using this function does take a bit of getting used to, but once again, it is just a case of trial and error. It can speed up your workflow a lot, so it is best to make use of it. And of course, what you then want to do is to go ahead and start appending these branches all over the tree trunk. So as you can by now appreciate, once again, once you've got those base templates in, this can be a world of fun. You can create any kind of tree you want. It's all modularized. It's all using the same texture and UV space. Now, once you've completed appending these branches and leaves all over the tree, what you're then going to want to go and do is to start to optimize uh, the geometry of in the tree. It's highly likely that some of those polygonal branches aren't going to be visible. So don't be afraid just to straight up append some of those leaves directly to the trunk. And of course, you're going to want to attach down all of those branches to the trunk. Make sure all of your trees look different. And of course, once they're all one, you can object paint them around your scene, export them out as an object file, and you're pretty much done. So that concludes the end of this tutorial. I hope it's been helpful to you all. If you've got any questions, then just drop a comment below and like and subscribe for more content coming soon. Thanks a lot.